Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are plant tissues, plant tissue system, anatomy of dicotyledonous plants wherein we will talk about dicot root, dicot stem and dicot leaf. Anatomy of monocotyledonous plants, wherein again we'll talk about monocot root, monocot stem, and monocot leaf. And secondary growth. So, what is plant anatomy? So, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the anatomy of plants. In the last lesson, we talked about morphology. So in morphology, we talked about the external structure of a plant. External structure in the sense like, oh, we talked about the flowers, appearance of flowers, leaves, shape of the leaves. Uh, so everything that is visible externally, right? So even on this slide, you can see many different types of plants. So one of them is a cactus where uh, you can see thorns. You can see that the how the plant looks like, how the stem and the flowers are in this plant when compared to some other flowering plant where you can see big flowers with broad leaves with prominent veins and midrib. Correct? Again, you see another plant which is tall enough with so many leaves, and again the shape of the leaves are quite different there. So when we talk about all these external features, we talk about the morphology of plant. So, we also need to know the internal structure of plant. I mean, what is there? How does the interior of a leaf look like? Or how does the interior of a stem look like? So, here in this lesson, we are going to talk about the internal structure of plant. And this branch of science or this branch of biology which deals with the internal structure of plants is known as plant anatomy. Now, in order to know about the internal structure, we need to know the composition of each and every part of the plant. Suppose if I want to know the internal structure of a leaf, we need to know what is the leaf made up of inside. Right? Okay. So basically the branch of biology concerned with the study of internal structure of plant and their parts. So parts of the plant means all these parts like leaf, stem, root. So we will talk about their internal structure. As I said, in order to study their internal structure, we should know their composition. When I say composition, again, we'll start from the basic composition. So what is the basic building block of any living organism? Forget about plant. Whether it is a plant or an animal, what is the basic building block? Absolutely, it is a cell. Right? We have already talked about this levels of organization of any living organism. So the basic building block is a cell. And those cells group together to form tissues. So now when we want to study the internal structure of a plant, we should have enough knowledge about the tissues which are present inside the plant. So we will also talk about plant tissues because only when we have knowledge on plant tissues, we will be able to talk about the internal structure of different parts of the plant. So with this idea in mind, so I think now it is clear what are we going to study in this lesson. Correct? Okay. So with this idea in mind, let us go ahead and have a quick recap of the levels of organization. As I said, when I say levels of organization, the first thing or the first step, the basic building block is nothing but a cell. Now these cells group together and specialize in some function like a group of cells which perform a similar function or a group of cells which are similar in structure. So they group together to form tissues. Again, these tissues will group together to form organ. Now, let me take an example here. Uh, let us talk about human beings. Now, even human beings are all living organisms. So, the basic building block of our body is also a cell. Correct? So, the first step is cell. 
Now cells inside our body, some of the cells will group together to form a tissue, which tissue will perform some specific function. So here in this picture, you can see that the first was a cell. So this one was a cell. Many such cells decided that, okay, we will perform one particular function. So many such cells formed this tissue. Now what are these tissue? This is nothing but uh, the picture of the lung tissue. So many cells together decided to form this kind of tissue. Many such tissues grouped together formed this lung. So lung is nothing but an organ. Again, many different organs like this form an organ system. For example, lungs as well as this uh, tube, the bronchioles, the bronchi, all those things, all different organs together will form an organ system. That is here, the respiratory system. So when you talk about the respiratory system in a human being, it is not only about the lungs. Lungs alone do not play a role in the respiratory system, right? Nose also plays a role. So nose in itself is an organ. So there are uh, some tissues which together form the nose, right? Again, you talk about the mouth. So mouth again is an organ which is made up of some group of tissues. So if you talk about the respiratory system, it has many different organs like the nose, the lungs, the uh, this uh, pharynx which you see here, the bronchi and the bronchioles. So here you see the bronchi and the bronchioles. So they are all different organs which together form the respiratory system. So that is organs together form organ system. So inside human body, you have so many different organ systems. You have respiratory system, you have digestive system, you have excretory system, you have circulatory system and each of these systems have is composed of a set of organs. So when you talk about say circulatory system, that, that system is made up of organs like heart, it is made up, it also it is consists of the arteries and the veins, right? Similarly, if you talk about the excretory system, it consists of organs like kidneys, ureters, urethra, urinary bladder, right? Okay, and now many such organ systems together form an organism. So as I said just now, the, so many organ systems together, the respiratory system, circulatory system, excretory system, they all together form a human being. So this is basically the level of organization and this level of organization is true not only for animals but also for plants. So when we talk about plants, plants also the basic building block is cell. So many cells will compose tissues. So those plants, some of the plant tissues will group together to form organs. Organs will form organ system and it will form the organism and organism is nothing but plant. Now, why I gave the example of human being in detail because human being is something which is very uh, much, we are very much familiar with it. So, it, it is easier for us to understand this, right? So, with this idea of levels of organization in mind, we will now start talking about tissues because we already have enough knowledge on cells. We know what are cells, how, what, I mean, what is the internal structure of a cell and all those things. So here we'll talk about tissues and to be more precise, we will spend time talking about plant tissues because here our aim is to study the internal structure of plants, right? So first let us see what are tissues. As I already explained, tissues are nothing but a group of cells that have a common origin and or work together to achieve a specific function. So it is not that suppose you have several cells and any any of them just combined with each other. It is not like that. Let us suppose I'm, I'm just giving a, a very rough example. Suppose you have 100 cells. Suppose there are 100 cells and out of those 100 cells, 10 of them decide that okay fine, let us come together and let us perform uh, one particular function. Right? So those 10 cells will group together to form one type of tissue. Again, let us suppose a group of 30 cells decided that okay, let us come together and let us perform an another function. So those 30 cells will group together to form a second type of tissue. So that is how the grouping of cells happen. So that each group of cells, that is each tissue should have one common function. They have a common goal. 
correct it is something like suppose you have a class uh, of 50 students right and let us suppose that your school annual day is going to be celebrated the next day and there are several tasks that you have to do suppose uh, you have to uh, do the decoration you also need to prepare for the cultural events you also need to uh, receive the guests so there is a couple of things that you need to do and there are the class has a total strength of 50 so what do you do you basically so what do you do in that case we divide the task amongst a group of students so the total strength is 50 right so what do you do we say that okay 10 students together let them do all arrangements to receive the guests again five students together let them do the decoration for the event again 15 students together let them prepare for the cultural activities correct so what is happening those 15 students who are preparing for the cultural activities they have a common goal correct so some cells to do all of the, those students they have a specific function correct they have to have a specific purpose they are also working together correct and the way they are preparing for it is also similar they are all practicing either dance, music or something. But the people, but those students who are uh, planning to receive the guests, they are doing something else because their function is something else. So each of these group of students, so each group can be termed as a tissue. And many such tissues together will form an organ. Correct? So that is the idea of tissues. Now, when we talk about tissues, the plant tissues and the animal tissues are not exactly similar. They are quite different from each other. I mean, if you look at even in fact, if you look at the structure of a plant cell and an animal cell, even they are quite different. I mean, they are not uh, completely different, but there are quite a few differences between a plant cell and an animal cell, which we have described, uh, discussed in detail in, in our lesson on cell. Right. So if you want, you can have a look at that lesson as well. So here you can see an example of an animal tissue, which is the lung tissue. And also you can see the example of a plant tissue. So the, this is how the tissue looks like. It is a group of cells working together to achieve a specific function. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.